Today on Jer and Jeff Eat New West, we're talking to Florin from, I wanted to say Queens Park Meat, yeah. Queens Meat and Deli. Like when I was a kid, I used to stop at this shop on the way home from, from Spencer, and the, the old guy would sell, uh, like, turkey for a nickel <laughs> to, the, to the kids. <laughs> yeah, I, I loved this shop, but... How, how did how did you like what's the story of how it went from what it was to what it is now I used to be I, I finished a butcher school when I, you know, in Romania and um, at that particular time in order to become a chef you had to know butchery and pastry mm -hmm. and I worked in Europe quite extensively for for five years and I was also working as a as a butcher yeah and um, when I arrived here um, the restaurant wasn't in the picture because it was requiring too much money so I said you know I'm probably gonna find a butcher spot and a butcher place yeah. and then opening this up and then long story short I'm here. What do you think are some of the biggest misconceptions about a butcher shop? That it's expensive. We do have a, a competitive prices than the, the, the big supermarkets and we compete we can I can say that we compete with them some certain items, definitely the steaks, and um, we cut everything to order here, that's what be more like an advantage coming over. We deal with what's, what's the best on the market, and we support the local and the boutique farms, and um, we um, don't carry anything that has been Medicare or hormones or any What What's your biggest seller? I think yeah. the bacon burgers, we go over 400 pieces a, a week. Okay, so take a second, walk us through a bacon burger, What what's, what is that exactly what, what it sounds like? <laughs> Chunk, chuck, uh, brisket, sirloin, and we cut it with 30% bacon. Okay. Oh, so the secret, the, the secret it's, 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 it's the, it's the bacon, is the, is the dry, uh, dry cured bacon, um, apple with triple apple with milk. That's will be the, the secret to them. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, the first, first time I cooked, they're, they're freaking amazing. You, um, you endorse this, this burger. Yeah, as, as yeah. A, you approve. As yeah. A, yeah. A, <laughs> It's, I mean, it's too bad for people if they don't eat pork, but if you you do, it's just, it's such a yeah. beautiful... Like, He's taking a shot at me, I, I don't eat pork. <laughs> um, but I'm sure I can get a tasty with burger with bacon. We do make oh, really? bacon, yes. I've had sausages from all over the place. <laughs> They're great, like the fennel, the, you have, you kind of are always experimenting with them too. So you can come in and have, uh, you've had like a curry, you always kind of have the Italian. Yeah, we do have Toulouse, um, the sausage with bacon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> bacon, red, red wine, and nutmeg. Best seller at the moment is um, a chicken, uh, cilantro, and jalapeno. We switch oh, wow. it up every every week. We have a we have a new or every second week we have a new sauce. We just switch it up mm -hmm. a little bit, see see what works, and then we, we keep it. We keep the recipe, and then we make it again. It seems like it's very okay and very normal for people to call in and say, "Oh, I like made to order." Essentially, mm -hmm. maybe somebody hasn't been to a butcher very much. They might not know that it's okay to call you and and talk to you about what they want. This this what we base at least uh, forty percent of the business on the phone. Forty percent, oh, really? Yeah. Just placing yeah. placing orders. I mean, without that phone, then I wouldn't be in business. I'll say. Let's say somebody's coming in and they want to make up a simple steak that they're they're not they haven't done a steak very many times. What well, what would you what advice would you give to somebody as far as what they should buy, how they should prepare it? If I'm coming in saying I'm a complete beginner, I don't know anything about. Making a good steak. I saw Jim and Jeff's video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, you've got meat. For yeah. Sale. yeah. <laughs> and I feel like grilling steak or doing. Yeah. Stuff. What's like? What are the first first questions you go through? I'll probably say um, they were using a pan or a grill. That would be your first. So the uh, method. Okay. Method. Yeah. Method. Depends on if you're using a grill, you want to use a little bit of it's more like a fatty or cut something more because mm. when it's going, it's going to dry a little bit. On the grill, that's what the grill is. Using a pen is a little bit different because it's a you can put more temperature with the pen than the grill right. to the steak itself, yeah. and you can uh, you can overcook it because it's yeah, it's flat on the on, on the surface. Go with a uh, vet salt and pepper olive oil, high heat. Get medium rare or medium because after that, if you take it over medium oil, well done, it's gonna taste a bit livery because of the iron. Right. The iron yeah. So what happens? Slice it against the grain. That's it. High heat. Yeah. Sear it two and a half minutes, decide three minutes, all depends how thick it is, and then slice it against the grain. Let it rest. Let it rest, right? Let it yeah, rest yeah. for five minutes, I'll say. Do you tent it? it? What do you cover I, it? I, I don't. I find that you kind of, you're still cooking it. When you do that, just leave it on the counter there. If it's your steak, it's very thin, 
then if you don't want to overcook it, put it in a freezer a little bit. You want to have it as cold as possible. If your steak is a little bit thicker on the thicker side, you want to leave it on the counter room temperature and then you cook it. Because yeah. you bring it up to temperature, right. if the steak is thinner, you want to drop the temperature. Hmm. Because you're increasing the temperature already with the grill. So yeah. what happens if it's already at the temperature, if it's room temperature is 22 degrees, 20, 20 yeah. So it's already 20 degrees. So when you put it on the barbecue, it's going to shoot up in temperature very, very fast. But when it's, uh, let's say, minus one, yeah. when you just put it on the grill, it takes a lot of time to get it to 20. Mm -hmm. So what happens, you can do a lot of caramelization on it. What do you think is the biggest mistake people make when they're prepping their steaks? Like, where, where do they go wrong? Not having a hot, a hot, hot enough pen. Yeah. Yeah. If it's um, if it's uh, if you do it on the barbecue, you want to move your steak regularly, and you, you want to have super hot. You want to have high heat. Mm -hmm. And then it's the the, the, the the misconception is like you put your steak on the barbecue and you just let it sit and then you move it once. You, you do that in a pan when you have yeah. a spoon. You want to have a hot pan. You do that in a pan because you lose temperature for right. the pan. But on the barbecue, if you have a hot spot and a cold spot, then when you put your they're all barbecue. They do have those hot and cold spots. But your steak one side is going to be cooked. The other one is going to be less cooked. So you want to move it around. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. That was very helpful. Yes. I learned a lot. And um, people always get mad at us for not saying where things are located. Where so are we? Where, where, what is the address here? 402 Second Street, New Westminster. Yeah, it's just right by Herbert Spencer in Queens Park. It really tucked away. I don't think you'd, you'd know it was there, but it's a fantastic little spot. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Awesome.